This is Lance, inventory software expert since 2006. This video was created for one of our clients, but I felt it would help many people in this YouTube community. I am so grateful for our clients who are willing to become YouTube famous with us and contribute to the community. A couple meetings ago, we discussed what we want your desired production overall workflow to be and we sort of wrote it up here and it's an outsourced workflow so i think it'd be good to just read through this first and then walk through it in fishbowl so in order for the workflow to work we have to do some preliminary setups the location group called electrospace electrospace the name of your vendor a company shipped to address of electrospace so it's not good enough to have their address in the vendor section. Their address needs to be on your company, in your company screen. It has to be one of your company addresses. Talked about reorder points order up two levels, ABC classifications per location group, because that helps with auto creation of orders. Create a service type part that represents the vendor's contribution, like what they are adding to the work order, whether they're adding their own inventory or they're adding their own labor. We need a service type part that represents that. That's important to understand because some people think, well, they're adding inventory. It's an inventory type part. No, um, because it's theirs and not ours. We don't want it on our balance sheet. It should be a, a service type part. Create a pass through other current asset account for this service type part. So on your QuickBooks chart of accounts, we need to have that account set up just like a pass through account that represents the other current assets for that service type part. We could do that in other ways. I, I think some companies have, have used a, an expense type pass-through account. We decided to make it an, an asset type pass-through account. Map the service type part. And that's the fishbowl service type part, I believe. We should clarify that. Map the service type part to that account. Yeah, this, this one's unclear. We should make this more clear. Create service type part that represents the vendor contribution. Map the service type part to that account. We actually need both. Create a fishbowl and a QuickBooks service type parts and map the service type parts to that account. Yeah, we need we need a service type part in uh, fishbowl and. I think we would want it in QuickBooks as well. Yep, as we see here below, map the service type part in QuickBooks desktop in the item list in fab items, fixed asset account map to the in the inventory outsource pass-through account. So we're calling the pass-through account an inventory, uh, an inv outsource pass-through is the account we created. And you already have parts set up in QuickBooks and they all begin with fab, and we're mapping them to that pass-through account. This does not say inv outsource pass-through. That image is, might be kind of confusing. It's, it's trying to say in red, this is wrong. That needs to be changed to inv outsource pass-through. Uh, okay, so that's the setup. A lot of setup needs to take place in order for this to work, and all those settings need to be in place. So then the workflow, we create an outsource manufacturer order to the fabricator. Now that language might cause some confusion because there's, there's no outsourced manufacturer order in Fishbowl. It's just a manufacturer order. And we select a bill of material that just happens to be the bill of material that represents the outsourced work. The work order doesn't exist until you actually issue the MO. Email the custom outsourced manufacturing order. Now that's what we were just looking at, this cool custom report that Kendra made. And basically what's custom about it is it changed this column to reference the service type part in Fishbowl. Now this is the service type part right here in Fishbowl. Let's probably be good for us to just take a quick peek at that and look at that. Notice the unit of measure of the service type part is dollar. The cost, the standard cost of the service type part is a dollar. So we set it up this way so it would be flexible. 
and we could enter in whatever the charge was that the vendor gave us. So a little bit of creativity there. And just to reiterate, the account that this service type part is mapped to is also the M outsource pass-through account that we created in QuickBooks. Moving on, let's scroll down. So yeah, email custom outsource manufacturer order for, to fabricators. So this custom report right here that we built, we can click on this email button right there and it'll email that to your fabricator so they know what they're supposed to do. And your fabricator also already has the instructions and the bill of material and everything from what I remember. So we didn't need to create anything for that. We didn't need to send them that. Um, that was previously established. We just need to send them the finished good part number that we want them to manufacture. Now we're ready to enter a purchase order and we're gonna buy raw goods. I mean, you could do this at any time, but in this workflow, we just decided to put it right here. Buy from Austria, Command International, uh, and vendors in US can use the auto PO tool for Electrospace Location Group to basically get your purchasing done. And specifically the unique to your company, you're buying from your parent company. Uh, you're using the Electrospace Location Group on that PO. And that'll just auto populate the ship to address on the PO if you do that. And the auto PO tool also can consider just the Electrospace. So if we review a little bit the setup up here, we talked about reorder points and creating a location group for Electrospace. So if we set reorder points up for parts in the Electrospace location group, then we can run the auto PO tool in Fishbowl to give you a purchasing recommendation to bring your inventory levels to your predefined desired levels. Okay, so when they ship it to the fabricator, then this part's gonna be kind of counterintuitive, maybe, I don't know, um, but you have to look at this as you're managing multiple locations, right? And so you sort of have to receive it for, you have to record the receipt when it arrives at Electrospace. So you'll pre perform a receiving step, even though it doesn't show up in your warehouse and you don't actually see this. And then the export to QuickBooks will debit inventory and credit payables. Nothing special there, just a regular um, receipt. And then you'll reconcile the purchase order, probably add landed cost on that step. The export to QBD will delete the item receipt and replace it with a bill and debit inventory and credit payables, nothing special. Okay, so now your vendor's got everything they need and they've got your work order that says, do this. You're ordering them to perform work. And the next step is finish the outsource work order in Fishbowl in Electrospace uh, LG. So maybe we should put a preliminary step here. When the outsourced manufacturer finishes, or we should say finishes the MO. Then you would go into Fishbowl, into Fishbowl, do the MO screen, and finish the outsource work order in Fishbowl and Electrospace. So click on the blue checkbox, go through the finish wizard. Um, oh, I explained that here. Go to the MO and click the finish button. This will open the finish wizard in Fishbowl. Pick the items on the pick screen in the wizard and click next. That's an optional step. There's a setting to skip that. I think we put that in there uh, just to assure that we are recording actual consumption. Maybe the vendor is going to tell you, which would be awesome, tell you what they actually consumed. Then the export to QuickBooks will do this. Um, Fishbowl will create a manufacturing journal entry in QuickBooks. They'll debit whatever account the finished good is mapped to 
and credit whatever accounts the raw goods and service type parts are mapped to, which the service type part is mapped to that env outsource holding account that we looked at. Transfer order creation. Kind of a side note, or maybe it's in the wrong order, um, but sometimes there's not really an order. Like diff these different steps can happen at different times. We can actually use manufacturer order finish wizard, the last step of the finish wizard, to just select uh, your Mawa location. So let's say the vendor finished it and shipped it to you and didn't really tell you they finished it. You just, all of a sudden it just arrives and it's got a manufacturer order number on it. We could train your receiving guys to look for that and say, hey, if it has a manufacturer order number on it, give that to the office and the office will go into the manufacturer order screen and close out the manufacturer order and put whatever location you selected. Just tell us where you put it. You know, whoever's trained to do that step will close out the manufacturer order and select the location that it's in. So, all right, should we go do it in your system? So in order to pick that MO, MO number three, that we were having a problem picking, we need the inventory in Electrospace's place. When the vendor, when Electrospace says they're finished with it, you could either record that it's finished right now or wait till you receive it. Might be more accurate if you wait till you receive it. Keep the paperwork, the email, and then come here to finish. Select the serial numbers that they said. Select the ones with the tracking. So yeah, everything's being tracked. So the tracking values are stored in this little space right here. Go through and select the, the ones and the tracking values. Then click finish. This skipped the raw material consumption. So we estimated it should cost $1,997.01 for this to be done, but maybe they charged us $2,010.15. So we can just put whatever they charged us right there. And then Fishbowl is going to automatically look at the average cost, the value in stock of all of these items. And I'll click next. Then when we click finish here, we say, okay, we're finishing seven. It wants to go into the Electrospace stock because this manufacturer order is being built at the Electrospace stock. But if we are receiving the inventory and the inventory has been received, we want our receiving guys to tell us where they put it in Mawa. And then we've got the serial number that this item is going to be called. So we're doing serial number creation right here. You know, we could upload this from a file. We could auto create it sequentially. This one is a nice new feature. It's been around for a little while. These are the serial numbers that went into the um, the product, right? These are the serial numbers that we consumed. And a lot of companies want the consumed serial number to become the yielded serial number as well. All right, click finish. And now that finished good is in Mawa and we can sell it. Yay, there's our whole process. You just watched this tutorial video all the way through. That must have been it was helpful. Click like below and subscribe to see more helpful videos like this. And if you have any questions about the content that was discussed in this tutorial, comment below and we'll respond. To reach us directly, go to brandoconsulting.com.